Welcome back from the very first fat beat of the North American Challenger Series. What's up, guys? I am David Freak Turley. With me is apparently the less agile than before, Aiden, Zyrie, and Moon. But that's okay. Flexibility not required in shoutcasting. We are minutes away from our second game. It's fun. But, uh, between enemy esports and TDK tonight. It's, it's not required in shoutcasting? Agility. All you have to do is talk. Well, my interview was a little weirder than yours, I guess. But here's a look at their comp when they squared off last night. You can see here they had a pretty decent composition here, double AD that has a rumble in it for TDK. I think this is how you should build it with either really hard engage from your support and your jungler or disengage from those two roles. Yeah, there's a lot of damage, and I'm glad they have an AP top lane for mixed damage, but unfortunately for TDK, they couldn't quite pull the victory uh, as really just the playmaking ability of NME was so high. Inox, converted mid laner this season, just went off on that Cassidin. The individual playmaking, again, right, Sivir getting to pick fights, Morgana having good follow-up for that Cassidin, Rexai getting to do individual things, made them very strong, and in fact, let's see how that all played out. Yeah, talking about it, and now we're gonna show it. Inox, converted to the mid lane, but Trashy, Moved over from another country to be here. Know him from H2K if you watch the European Challenger series. And he sets up Inox, that new mid laner, with a five minute first blood. Flash Q Ignite, pretty darn strong here. Bot lane trades, though. I'm actually so surprised that Otter and Body Drop did well against uh, Sivir versus Draven, but so much damage output here when you land bindings. Yeah, here's the thing is that Boomerang Blade still hit both of them again. And watch, they just continue to go through. They have to deal with Otter and Body oh, Drop. Oh, that bind was so good. Because they're coming in here. Trashy flashes in to get the knockup and just starts going hard on this team. Louie and his support, Smoothie, were losing that two-on-two -two for so long that this is a full-on five-on-five in the bot lane at 15 minutes. Everybody just shows up. It is a party down there. A dragon attempt. Third one did go to TDK for this one. But these binds from Body Drop on point all Sarah. day gets chunked out right there. And now he has to abandon this fight. And it's the trail off here. When your AD carries are now your front line, they are so squishy and you're gonna see it right here. Yeah, you can see the power of the equalizer. It does give them a brief respite, but Flares is too big to die anymore. And he CCs the whole team, basically. Runs up Kyle, so squishy. And the double AD carry comp crumbles underneath enemy and they're just sustained pressure. Yeah, when you get bursted out before your poke and, and general AOE goes down, it's not going to work well for you. And then you can just die when you're ahead like this. And this is the final fight here. You're going to see Inox picking up one kill, two kills, goes for Smoothie, picks up his third. Kai's going to die. By the way, spoiler alert, this is the one where the Pentacle gets stolen. <laughs> Quadra kill. Zonia's. And here comes the Rift Walk. Uh -huh. Can he Does get, he get it? it? No. No, it's the Tormented Soil. Body drop. Doesn't hey, even drop. He, he has to live up to his name. He has to drop at least one body that fight. He did. Drop came back up, but it doesn't matter. So NME, of course, great performances. Inox, a guy I got to highlight. 16, 1, and 9. Was an underperforming top lander from Evil Geniuses last split. Well, guess what? He's a pretty darn good mid laner right now in Challenger. Otter, also the AD carry Sivir. Again, Sivir versus Draven, not an easy matchup, but his support made it easy. Yeah, the big thing here for me, though, is Trashy moving over here was a big risk for the team. Yeah. They didn't try him out, and he just instantaneously meshed with the team, took over the shot calling. If you watched EU Challenger, you'll know Trashy from H2K and SKP for a little bit. This guy was extremely aggressive, and he would force things. And that would come back to bite him. Since then, he's actually scrimmed against a lot of LCS teams. And when I talked to him, he's like, I really like Medios' play style. We're going to go ahead and start adopting that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it's really cool to see his play style transition. Adaptability, definitely one of the strongest skills of a player. You can sometimes play purely to your own strengths, but if you can learn new strengths, it just gives you more things you're able to do. Rek'Sai, of course, definitely one of the higher damage junglers, means he can still hold on to a lot of that old style, but he's definitely done a really good job of keeping uh, the overall game in mind. Yeah, he plays more controlled now than he did before. He's not going in for all of these risky kills. He's going for the safe kills. So I really think that he's improved his play and adjusted to a style that is better for him as a whole. Mm -hmm. And so overall, it means that enemy as a team look to be one of the scariest teams in Challenger. Now, 
They are one of the best looking in the online qualifiers. They're one of the best looking in the off season throughout various tournaments. ESL put on a couple. Man, um, they just might be the best looking in general. Did you just see Trashy on your screen? It's true. Looks like Iceman from Top Gun. <laughs> True. He is. He's a stone cold killer as well. But the big thing also, you know, Nian said he thinks that they would be ready for them on Fusion. We'll have to see, though. Uh, meanwhile, TDK kind of have looked fairly middling for a while. They did manage to qualify, so they clearly have played well enough to get here. But they are one of the dark horses of the Challenger series right now. Yeah, you look at their lineup, you see Kez and Seraph, two players that in the LCS did not have successful splits. Kez is known as a very reserved shot caller. And when he's up against somebody like Trashy who forces the issue, this is going to be really interesting to watch because it's kind of a clash of opposites. Kez is going to back up and concede objectives and Trashy is going to take it and then take even more. Yes. And I just want to point out, we haven't talked about TDK very much in this pregame as they go into champ select. When this team was made, they basically wanted to make a, a Korean NA team. The, the goal is for this team to play in Korean. Seraph, yes, is the old CLG Seraph. Uh, Kez, a Korean American, speaks the language as well. Kyle and Lewis XTG, they pulled in from Korea as, uh, oh, I forget the, the official term for players outside of the, there's residents and there's like exempt non-residents exempt non and non-residents. Non yeah, so Seraph is the one exempt non-resident, uh, Kyle and Lewis XTG being just non-residents, the rest from NA. Yeah, so they formed that team to play in Korean, like you said. Yep. They need to win lane phase though. Yeah. That is a big thing here for TDK, is their laning phase is okay, mm -hmm. but they fall into that challenger pitfall of when you ask them, how do you win games? It's like, we win lane. We win lane. <laughs> and then we win the game from there. When you are facing equally skilled, if not better opponents, mm -hmm. counting on winning lane is not a good strategy. Right. You need more than that. You need decisive shot calling. You need team cohesion. And they are not on that level just yet. But given some time, they could get there. Well, Kez, of course, a very experienced shot caller. We saw him on Complexity. That is, of course, the old Kez as well. Uh, had some had some good runs with Complexity. They would typically win their long games. And I do attribute a lot of that to Kez being yeah, able to navigate they did the too. team. Right, exactly. So, uh, TDK, if they can bring him out far enough, maybe Kez can bring in his old experience here. But the first pick, Janna, to get ourselves back into the champion set of things, will give TDK the ability to disengage and play longer games. Yep. That long game is where Kez thrives. Hashtag 80 minutes the dream. He was a part of that. And That's I remember true. talking to Prawley, and he was saying that Kez is the guy who's like, no, you don't need to fight that. Back up. And he'd probably be like, no, 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 I want to fight. And he's like, no, get out. You don't have to fight that. Yep. Seed objectives, live to fight another day in a higher percentage fight. Smart choices overall. The Callista, though, that was so feared in the fusion uh, matchup there that was first picked or banned by them is going to go over here to Otter, though. He had a great Sipper game, 5-1-20, and 20, I believe. Now he's giving Callista a more individual playmaker. And lo and behold, Graves Janna, the matchup chosen to face against Callista. Yep, it's a matchup that is extremely good. Better base stats, more more just auto attack damage too. Overall, you want to take Callista out with auto attacks early and absorb some of it. It's the matchup to do it with. Mm -hmm. They put the Morgana on there though to make sure that Kez didn't pick up something like a Vi or something that can dive this and lock it down. So it helps Callista stay mobile. Yeah. Even the Vi steal comes in all the same. And the thing is, at this point now, Cyan and Morgana are flex picks. I was wondering when we were going to start seeing Cyan support. I've been waiting for like, <sighs> since the rework essentially to see when Cyan Sport came in. We did see it uh, in the off-stream games yesterday, exactly. You can find the VODs. We actually did some of the highlights of it earlier today. So I don't know where Morgan and Cyan are going. It, Morgana doesn't strike me as an Inox champion though. He likes champions that, for go, that go in, right? So a lot of these, like, I just want even want to jump at the bands here. Mm -hmm. A lot of these are targeted across the board. Like mid laner, enemy esports wants to set Inox up with the best matchup possible. That's why they're also last picking him, so that he knows what he's getting into here. Yeah. And if it is a flex pick, you know they have the option to send him into a bad matchup or a good matchup. They're going to send him into the good one That's all, every time. Well, Vlad top lane is going to be the grab here for Seraph with Azir mid. I assume. Although I guess, I guess I've seen the champions in the other roles as well. Haven't seen Vlad in a very long time. I also got to point out, no J-Span and Kyle didn't go for it. Yep. If you guys don't know Kyle, he is like the epitome of the Jace god from yep. Korea. And to not ban it and then not pick it as well by TDK is surprising to me. Yeah, you ever see uh, like Master Challenger Jace videos? Mm -hmm. It's usually Kyle, but 
he got it one time, I think, in the past. And then people were like, never again. And then I remember Reddit was like, why are you giving Kyle Jace? And they risk it here too, but he doesn't pick it up. Instead, they ban out three other champions from that mid lane and say that we, we can handle your Jace. The bigger individual playmakers go away and they say, I dare you to play with Poke. So he picks his ear and he's going to try for it with this one. Again, we are on 5.2, so it is the uh, the old -nerf. version of that champion. Yeah, um, the pre-nerf is the other right way to say it. Zareth will go mid lane for Inox, so he will play something back and safe. Yeah. Now the question is, is it top or support Scion and Morgana? Looks like top Scion support Morgana. Played it last time. I'm not that surprised. Pretty standard but. across the board. Uh, that's boring. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, they, they're basically playing almost the same thing they did yesterday mm -hmm. in terms of what they want to accomplish, except Inox, he's on a pokey champion. Yeah. Because he knows he's not going to kill Azir in lane. Right. True. Azir is a very difficult champion to get to in lane. You have to go really hard on dive. You have to pick something ridiculous, like maybe like an Akali or something yeah. to continue to get to him. But even then, you have to outplay his wall. So he's just going to sit back and be like, all right, you know what? I don't always have to kill you in lane. Mm -hmm. I can sit back and poke and be a siege tool for my team. I want to see how this works out for Inox, though. That does not strike me as his style. He did at least play old, old, old Nidalee back before That's she true, had to use Cougar for him. He was poking all the time. Yeah, so... But he's a poke champion just like it. There, there is some of that instinct still left over for, for Inox. And again, you expect any top-level player to be able to emulate more than one style, I think players will always just always be best at one given style, whatever their natural inclination was, but they can get that second style to like a 90% mark in Inox. Again, used to play Nidalee all the time, so it's something that I expect he's gonna be okay at regardless. Um, but getting our team comps in, you still have to give a pretty big edge to the team with all this great poke power, the Azir, the Janet to back it up, the Graves as follow-up, but TDK haven't looked the sharpest. Yeah, TDK, their team cohesion leaves something to be desired. They need to get through laning phase, even or ahead, to actually operate. Whereas enemy can pretty op pretty much operate at any stage in the game, as a team, as players. They don't really care about momentum too much. Yeah. Well, Flares does. He's playing Scion. All he has is momentum. Sometimes you just can't stop it. There's no breaks. <laughs> <laughs> no breaks in the Scion train. But we are here into the rematch between TDK and Enemy. Enemy, of course, did win yesterday. We just saw those highlights a minute ago. In a fairly long game, but controlled all the same by these guys. What I'm interested by, though, is TDK bringing out the Vlad top. Haven't seen that in quite some time. Seraph was actually touted to be a more carry top laner. Shield, you didn't really get that out of him. TDK just might. And also, we have this Graves Janelin that's supposed to win against this uh, enemy bot duo. What you laughing at, Trashy? Take a Sand Soldier to the face. Doesn't even care. Yeah. But Seraph, like you said, when he came over, people were like, these are Sandra highlights. Whoa, who is this guy? And his Nidalee highlights were really just crazy. And then yeah. he comes in, he's like, Shivana. Yeah. Renekton. Playing all the meta things, and people were like, Day 35 of the LCS. <laughs> when is Seraph going to play a carry? And he never got to do it. The one I remember actually of him was he was Jax against LMQ and he started out 2-0 and and then still lost to Ackerman when he was like a level up and two kills ahead who was on Shivana that game. Yep. And that was like my quintessential like Seraph moment where it was like, how do you not win a game at that point? So hopefully he's shaking off the jitters, shaking off the rust and he's in good shape here. The Vlad I do want to see do well. He's going to start Kez off in the jungle, and it's, by the way, a lane swap here for NME. Yep. No deep wards by TDK means they didn't see it coming necessarily. NME going to start up the freeze just... while Janna Graves are doing their crux. No deep wards from anybody because of the fact that they had done battle lines. Nobody could really shove in. So they get the lane swap, and now Body Drop is harassing this. He's getting a lot of gold income for this one. Kez no... Seraph losing health. Smite is down, There's by no the way. There's always a chance. Oh. Ooh, okay. Kez got it. You gotta go between those ticks, Kez. He got it. So he's good. Yeah, took all the CS, but Body Drop did deal plenty of damage. Thankfully, duo jungling is a fairly safe thing to do. Flares did not, by the way, surprise. Go to Cheese the Camp at the start of the game. Trashy and Flares are gonna take uh, their bottom camp as soon as possible. They know actually this camp would be contestable by the duo lane that TDK put down there, so they rush to it before it can be stopped. And TDK do nothing about it. Smoothie doesn't even walk up. Here's the thing though, is that by this point, Trashy's already level two. Whereas on the TDK side, when they went to harass, Kez was only level one. Right? So there's no possible way that he has like 
a stat advantage or skill up advantage, whereas Trashy would have Vault Breaker by this point and could close the distance on Smoothie. So overall, good things done in the laning phase. So far, seems equal. The top laner is not getting much farm. The AD carry is basically free farming here. Uh, the CS lead you're seeing that's different is just because Otter is freezing, so more minions are alive for him to kill. And this is actually the first lane swap of the North American Challenger series. That's true. Even including the games from yesterday. So watching these two teams and how they deal with this is going to be very interesting. I know Seraph has experience in lane swaps. Mm -hmm. Not always the most fruitful, but Flair is also coming off a little LCS stint as well from Winterfox. That's true, and he was a pretty decent player there. They did get their one win over Gravity, so he's done some good work. Players right now being actually left alone to farm right there. He actually pulled in the Morgana support. They are 2v1ing the Graves right here. I want to know what Janna's up to. Smoothie helping with Seraph. I don't think it's going to be very fruitful. In lane swap, though, there aren't many things that are fruitful. They sit around. Some. There's a couple lanes that actually are quite good nope. when you have like Jack plus a CC support. You end up having these really good stun combos. When you get a Bruiser with a CC support? Yeah. yeah. When like an Annie's running around in the game? Yeah, like Annie Jack's is scary yeah. as crap. Yeah. I don't want to face that lane uh, ever. <laughs> to face in a Nemesis draft as a normal lane. Sure, why not? <laughs> Speaking of things that are scary, Louie, this guy was not faring well at all yesterday. He was getting killed in a two-on-two -two without jungle assistance on the enemy team. It was really rough. He looked like he could not stack up next to Otter, so they pick him the best lane possible, right? The Graves Janna to deal with the Kalista, yeah. but then enemy lane swap it, so he doesn't even get the matchup. And now I want to see how well Otter farms in the one-on-two. So far, Louis was doing okay farming under oh. his turret. They see, Crash they see. does get spotted. Tornado says hello, but Rend is still here. Otter's still doing some decent damage. Pops it in. Out he goes. So Otter's going to have to auto-attack, get some HP back here. Seraph has more potions left in the tank. So he's got the sustain advantage. But these these AD carries and these lane swaps are not completely safe. No. You get to the point where the bruisers and the top laners kind of shoot past you in power within a support next to them. I think right now it's mostly when the jungler shows up because neither air quotes top laner has great hard CC. So the follow-up yeah. is kind of not there. Uh, but if Viorexi do show, then it is. And it means that ward control has to be given to these AD carries. Or a support. Boom! Out of nowhere. But this wave is shoving up really hard. And so that's going to give Seraph some extra CS. He's going to be in a good spot. And that means that it's a one-on-one -on -one down bottom for Flares and Louie. Well, Scion one level down because he shared his lane for so long. Is poking out against Graves a little bit. He's already recovered for Pickaxe, though, meeting Flares. Not going to be in the best of situations in this matchup. Trashy knows that there aren't a lot of wards in this area, so he's actually just going to walk up. A lot of harass. It could be a flash vault breaker, maybe. Nope, already the flash. the flash by Luigi. They get the flash. Flares. He takes a lot of minion damage there, though. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. But he just yells. Here comes them. Inox. Wow. He's I level don't. Six. They did not see Inox coming down. He walked through his own pink ward, but Trashy gives it away. I think maybe they pinged him out. Burns the summon hill for move speed. But oh. wow, that shout on the minions means first blood for Trashy. That was a huge collaborative effort there from all three members of NME to make that kill happen. And there's more happening in this top lane too. In Unox and or sorry, Otter and Body Drop. I don't know why I said Inox. Uh, having their way with the sort of unconventional dual lane of uh, TDK all the same. Already looking at enemy's game. Man, MVP of that kill was Louis' own minion. It betrayed him. It did. It got afraid of Sion yelling at it. It ran, ran right at, it ran right at him and it was like a little kid and grabbed onto his leg. It's like, help me! Aww. And that slows you down. You can't run away as fast. You got a minion hooked onto your leg. Freaking munchkin minions. Why would they betray me? They already blocked me enough walking around. I know. <laughs> That's why I buy Phantom Dancer. <laughs> that also is why. Like, also because of like crit chance, but yeah. you know. Higher crit chance, but you can also walk through them. Disregard minions, acquire kills. There you go. Or just play Fizz. Oh. Or Rift walk over them. There's so many ways to deal with minions, guys. I don't know why you complain. Phantom Dancer on just everything. Tank, yeah, I'm done with this, playing Rek'Sai in the jungle. Get a Phantom Dancer. Hey, did you watch the season one commentated cinematic? Phantom Dancer's on Katarina. Ooh. Props to those who get the reference. That's right. Well, top lane under fire. Body drop. Getting money for hitting the turret. Why the heck not? 
Smoothie has very little to do here. The teleport by Seraph, though, and he is going for a sustain build. Yeah, he, he needs a sustain revolve. build. He keeps getting poked out of this lane. Otter is level six. He can Fate's Call body drop in, so Seraph needs to always be topped off, or else he risks being engaged on two, three. Wow. That's why, that's why he's Serpentine. All right, Inox. Batten zero on Xerathult so far this game. Zero for three. The poke style. You know, he worked out with his roam down bottom. But here's another roam. Hold on. Ooh, Ooh. good flash by Flares. They expected that combo to work. Lost his ult for it, but at least he's going to stay alive. It's one of those situations where you can't unburrow while in transit. You have to wait for it to complete, and it gives him enough time to flash away. So. Good retreats here. Kez is six, has already ulted once to a tunnel. TDK, though, holding a 600 gold deficit. Not too bad. They're getting farm in most of those lanes, but the kill being the big difference here. Kalista, actually, first item, Zerk Greaves. Interesting. Really wanted the mobility. Yep. Because her passive scales off of the rank of her boots. Yes. Not so much attack speed. Attack speed lets you it use helps. it a little more. It does help. But the distance is based off of your boots. So that's what he's going for, is just the mobility. Look at that. Whee! Oh, we don't see him again. No! But look at this. They know the flash is down. He has ulti, though. But Vi is coming. Black. He's got Trashy around. The ulti is popped. Doesn't do much, though. Flare's still forced to walk slowly. No ult for Graves. Will they re-engage? Trashy is six. They don't seem to want the fight, though. Flare's without mana means they back off. Also, Azir, the first one to rotate over, gets pinged out. But they leave. All he's doing is placing wards down, so Kyle is covering the sides. That's all they get for that. The flash is already down. They might go for this dragon, though. Knowing that Trashy is about 3 fourths HP, Flares does have his teleport available. He's still clearing his bottom wave. Yeah, well, lopsided lanes means TDK gets the chance to start this dragon without much contest. Flares recalls. He does have teleport. If they can get a ward down here, Trashy is going to the turret. All right, so he's not going to try for much. Inox. They're waiting. They look for the play onto Seraph. Black Shield ulti gets popped. Seraph does not have summoners. They're going to chase this one. He's not six either, but they can't stay under the turret that long. In comes the engage. Who's got the steal? It does go to the blue team. TDK gets dragon number one. Inox does not get knocked up by the Janna, though. No slow by Azir either. Enemy have a very, very tanky Scion. Top lane outer turret goes down, and I believe Inox missed all three again. Yeah, Kyle doing a good job. Zigzag. That's what you got to do. Zigzag it works perfect for him. Yep. He's going to be happy. Oh, that was actually level eight. A three on four, too. Yeah. So but they I mean, end up just poking and disengaging. And meanwhile, nothing really happens for NME or TDK. TDK get a dragon, mm -hmm. but... Enemy grew a farm lead. Yeah. They've they gotten a ton of minions now on Otter. Uh, and you can see what uh, you were talking about before, about being a little bit hesitant and not over committing for objectives. Enemy do not give up any kills for that dragon attempt. They don't you can go straight over it. that wall. And Kez wants flares. They're trying so hard to pick off this Scion. He does not have any escape tools, but his health bar is big enough that it's not going to matter. Knocks up Kez and walks out safely. So you're not holding the Scion down. Fixes his giant's belt and walks away. Yep. Flashes the buckle, too. Mm -hmm. Got to do that. It's intimidating. Oh, of course. You got to have a, a flashy looking belt buckle, too. Or it has to say something like menacing on it. Like, I was listening to the cast earlier today with uh, in a EU. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, Scion's running away, cowards! And he's running away from them. <laughs> <laughs> he's referring to his summoner that was making him ult out. <laughs> ah. Or was it two on one and calling him cowards for ganging up on him? Yeah, that's just smart strategy, okay? <laughs> it's a legitimate strategy. Yes. League of <laughs> Legends is a team game. If you die to a one on three, that's still your fault. So somebody's like, why are you camping me? It's a legitimate strategy. Yeah, your flash is down. As Learn you run to back play. into the bush to camp them more. Yeah. Oh, Trashy knows awards sees him. Where's it at? Not that Where's one. That? The Check guess the pinky? rush. It's Guessed left. wrong, homie. It doesn't matter. It's pink. He sees it anyway. Very good color matching here. The Oracles, the Ward, and Vi herself. But and Hot Shot's hair. Nice. Very true. Hot Pink GG. Louis X GG. Coincidence? I think not. Nope. <laughs> is that uh, Illuminati? Yep. There's so many triangles in this game, you don't even believe it. Look at that. They just need one more. Look at Between the positioning and triangulating, between otter, body drop, and smoothie. Yep. It's a triangle. Wow. Confirmed. <sighs> now it's a line. The whole time, there it's guys. a triangle. Cool. I mean, you can make a triangle between any three nonlinear points. So, I mean, pretty much That's no true. matter what, you get triangles. 
Actually, question. Hmm. Does it have to be an equilateral triangle to be uh, Illuminati? Nah. Can it just like be a random obtuse triangle? Actually, I've never seen it not be an acute triangle. <laughs> it's always an acute triangle. An acute? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Enemy, though, making some cute moves around the map. Two turrets down so far. Zerker Greaves, BF Sword, Callista. 30 CS up, by the way, over Lewis XGG. They managed to hold that two on one for so darn long. They made it a free farm lane for Callista. Got her out of that lane easily. Denied a bunch of farm yep. to Vlad. And Cyan escaped getting camped. So, Enemy. So many unsung, like, great moments by them in the laning phase. It's a, it's a win across the board for Enemy off the lane swap that they made happen. Like I said, TDK, if they get out of the laning phase and How do you behind, go 3 on turrets in a lane swap? You kill all the turrets. Yeah, no, you, you just have superior lanes where people are playing the lane swap yeah. directly and slowly but surely getting pressure. Because it's 14 minutes in, and like you said, they have all three of those outer turrets. You get the pressure, you get people to take the fights in the right places, and to not engage the fights. Like, they didn't go so hard on the dragon. Yeah. Was a four on three, and they didn't True. get punished for it. It is worth calling out that, that although we say it's three zero on turrets, there is that dragon that TDK went for. You can argue whether it was worth it or not, no. but they did. So, again, you can argue that, yeah. and I'm not disagreeing, but they did make the choice to say, we want dragon instead of probably they would have gotten bot lane turret for it. Uh, bot lane turret for it. So uh, that was the choice they made. They got something off of the lane swap, off of the lane allocations, but gold is certainly an enemy's favor. Yeah. Then gold definitely means a lot more right now than the 6% AP and AD. At least in my mind. You're going to change your tune when they get Dragon 5 at, you know, 34 <laughs> minutes. And... Oh, man. 20 minutes from now when they pick up Dragon 5 and their yep. Nexus is dying. <laughs> it's worth it! Not hey, worth it. if you get the comeback. Yeah, if they can get it, like, that's the thing, right? Is it's not worth anything, but it is an investment if it pays off. Yes. It's but that's a something. Big, it's not worth that that's much. a big if. Yeah, it's not worth a lot though and like when you get these three turrets you get money to spend on wards as well you get money to build your next item so they hit break points and they can continue to push their lead yeah you very typically get advantages out of the turret kills we'll see what i actually turns that gold into though. i want to see the difference between who gets the first dragon and who gets the first turret on win rate in win rate mm. unsure if there is a difference because you know some teams get both Sure. I mean, you just count those games, right? You 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 pick the games where they were different. Yeah. And you look at the contrasted win rates there. Something we can look at at some point, I'm sure. Three and a half thousand gold lead right now. Dragon in 30 seconds. Looks like enemy wants to hold the vision control here. They will not control the enemy jungle. Right now, there's actually plenty of folk coming out from Kyle as well. Will they stay for this ward? They should. And the Zerith poke. Both these guys having blue buff. You can tell the price is going to start dropping. I always feel like you can concede the first dragon if you get turrets for it, then you show up for the second one with more gold. Mm -hmm. So you're ahead if the fight breaks out. You can position yourself here better. You have more gold to possibly spend on wards to cover the entryways. So all in all, it always just seems to me that the first dragon is just not worth it in comparison if you're giving up a turret for it. But we will see, especially if it's two. <laughs> then, it's, then it's ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. So right now, Dragon wanted by enemy. They can make this one and one, and you can see that no turrets are really going to be answered for this. Mid lane did get pushed out just now by Kyle. Enemy spent a lot of resources at Dragon and didn't notice the mid lane push. They've been forced out of the river because of this. Otter not pushing bot either. Enemy really kind of letting their minions go, the exception of top lane, which is being pushed by flares. I mean, it is a Callista. He gets to kill this very quickly with his rent. However, Zara split up, though. This is risky. He gets the rent, but can they get out? TDK unwilling to start the fight. They don't actually have engaged. They so have flares top. Nothing happens. They're getting Seraph's TP for this. So flares gets to do whatever he wants now. He has that level advantage. He's almost level 11. He can TP. He can ultimate into a fight. He could go ahead and stay in lane and just try to push Seraph out. It'd be very difficult against his Vlad. Mm -hmm. But he has all these options now available to him because of the TP advantage. Wow. Unfortunately, there was no ward for a flank TP by Seraph because uh, Inox had split himself up from the TP. He was actually stuck in mid lane. TDK could have tried to force a 5v4 with Seraph in the outskirts. Didn't happen here. Flair is with a level lead and a cowl. Is already built to survive Seraph in lane. Looks like. I want to see if pressure does happen. It's a high CDR build, but no magic pen yet. It means not a lot of damage being dealt. Yeah, he just gets some HP back. That's about it. Trashy sees Kez. Kez sees the ward. 
What are they going to say about it? Looks like they're going to be pretty reserved in that and just back off. They have advantages across the board for enemy. They don't want to go with a very reckless play. Yeah, so that's not going to happen here. Look at the items for Otter. He's already got his Runan's Hurricane, his boots too. He's very mobile, has a lot of damage output. Mm -hmm. He can shove waves phenomenally well and extremely quickly. Yeah. And he's not far from Bloodthirst, which means life is going to be painful. Now, what I want to point out something on the other side, though, is this Graves build. Because it was something I've been thinking about for the last couple of weeks, and I wondered if it was going to be a real build, and it's Yomu's first Graves. Now, think about how every caster mid laner ever builds, right? All the Zeds, the Talons, the Fioras, with the exception of things like a... Uh, like a Ruin King for the spell, or like a Hydra for like the Wave Clear for Fiora, they all build Armor Pen, because Armor Pen is the best way to increase spell damage. Graves being a spell-based AD carry, I was wondering if we were going to see Yomu's first Graves builds. So far tonight, we're actually seeing two in a row. And it makes them very spell-based, because auto attacks are fairly weak, and it takes you a long time for that, for your auto attacks to matter, because there's no IE until like 7,000 gold. Louis and Kez looking for Otter. It's very hard for... Very hard oh, smart. Ooh. Oh, wait, it's not. Oh, oh, Graves showed killing it. But he's didn't not revealing Kez. his. Didn't see Kez. Yep, and that means so go for Louis. But it's a 2 on 2. Morgana came in, the flash engage, and here comes Smoothie as well. Flares in the back side, though. Body drop will land the stun onto Kez, and Kez might not have anywhere to go. Suddenly, yep, the Zareth ult will land, and it's going to be Inox picking up the first kill. The re engage with Exhaust, though, onto Smoothie. Can they make anything more happen? Oh, the bind onto Kyle. Body drop, such a good Morgana making this happen. 3 0 enemy. Very scattered fight there, but they're going to be able to take this turret off of that fight and a 2 for 0 oh in favor of enemy. Vladimir, by the way, you talk about the no Seraph TP. TP being used. He's pushing top and getting two waves of farm, but guess what? Enemy got two kills, a tier 2 turret, and maybe even the inhib turret for this. They're going to keep shoving this in. They have a lot of fast damage to shove into this turret. And Louis Oh, nice! wow, the minion once again betrays Louis GG. The Inox snipe comes in, and just like last time, a 20-minute inhibitor push. He just cannot catch a break. Louis GG is really struggling, whether it's in lane or the two on two, the one on two, he's still struggling. And then in these team fights, his positioning is he's getting caught out. Mm -hmm. Things like that are very rare. Yeah. Well, the lane counter pick not happening at all thanks to a lane swap by enemy. They got three turrets from the lane swap as well and their mid lane pressure. And all they gave up for this entire game has been one dragon. We're going to see that again. They didn't know Kez was in there, so Kez actually flashes to get on the Otter. So Otter is now disengaged. Kez can no longer close this distance because it is almost impossible to close on a Callista as a Rek'Sai after using your move block. And now Trashy, I thought he was going to go on Kyle here. But he goes for Smoothie, and instead they get the CC they need onto Kyle. Right there, the binding into the decimating slam. Really good lockup there on Kyle to stop him yeah. from outputting damage for the rest of the fight. Body drops target switching was just very, very sexy there. And a very well earned fight as a result. Wards get cleared out for both sides. And we sit on a 6,000 gold lead 21 minutes in for NME. Now, where is their next point of pressure? Bot and Hib is already dead. And with minions that scary, it's going to take a lot of effort to clear out. Immediately to the top lane here. Kill all these Rek'Sai tunnels, <laughs> get a little bit of gold on your support. But that's not the big thing. The big thing is everybody is moving towards this part of the map because they have a dominant gold lead. They have this bottom lane shoving. Seraph now has his TP, but they have the damage to take out this turret very quickly. You think though, still some respect is given. You have to you know, remember the fact that Azir can yes. knock you in. You still have a lot of burst coming out that is available from the Janus Shield and Graves. Oh. Once again, the bind on the Kyle. All three shots there. Ganache just needed to warm up for a bit, and he made it all happen. That's wave their, getting cleared. That's their big wave clear gone. Louis might have to blow his ultimate this wave to clear it. But look at that. Here comes the engage. Otter throwing him out. So much threat by Binding Drop. Landed the Binding Flares. Gets a stun on the Kez as well, and they will destroy Smoothie. 5-0 in this game. They've got another wave coming soon if they want to take down the inhibitor turret as well. Sucking that smoothie through a straw after that one. He was completely <laughs> just destroyed. Now they get to push this. Seraph has been MIA for the last couple fights. Yeah. He's just off doing other things. He TP'd, but like nothing comes of it. His TP is yeah. not very impactful on this flat. 
enemy absolutely outplaying this game. The 23 minute siege, all the damage coming out from Scion, Zareth, and Morgana bindings as well. They're looking for inhibitor turret number two, 23 minutes in. A lane lead turns into just crushing advantages. They are not letting up at all. And now 23 minutes in, inhibitor under fire. Kez goes in, it's a 5v5, but first kill comes in already. Flare is forced to run away though. Seraph ult is on him, but he's gonna go drop down so fast. Body drop doesn't even die for the trouble, so 2-0. Now Otter though does get shut down. Finally, a kill picked up for TDK. That was his last spell that you could cast there. Inox has his ultimate available, but he doesn't have the mana for it. Oh, there he goes. Boo. Kez, Boo. Kyle. All right, he dodges. Given the chance, Kyle yep. does dodge very, very well. You can see the mechanics of the players on TDK, but the problem is, enemy play this game so much better strategically from the lane swap to the sieges afterwards. Yeah, and when you get behind in a lane swap like that, you give up all those turrets, and then you're against a team that knows how to get vision control of where they're headed. Look at that topside jungle where they were just at. They gave themselves so many options. They were like, you can't flank us. We'll know when Seraph is TPing. We have the coverage here. Even if they wanted, like, they couldn't get that top lane turret, they'd be like, okay, we can rotate middle and then jump between the two. Mm -hmm. They set themselves up for something that didn't happen, but they had the option to do that. It's really, they were able to push that off of hitting Kyle out. Yeah. And what's cool is those wards might last just long enough for them to take Baron afterwards. Oh, solo kill. Dang. Inox just straight destroys yep. Seraph there, and they're going to take mid lane turret. Like, they're taking three objectives at the same time. Kalis is setting up Baron. Dragon's going down to uh, Trashy right now, and mid lane's already under fire. Just all across the board here, NME are looking really good in this matchup. Yesterday, they had a game where it was 30 kills to 10, and it ended in 36 minutes. Today, it looks like it's going to be a lot faster than that. Not many fantasy points for the NME players out there. Actually, none, because you can't pick them. It's Challenger Series. Good call, right, Freak? I know. You used to be able to pick flares, though. <laughs> he was in it for a week. Wouldn't, wouldn't count for this game, though. It should be a pretty quick Baron grab. Otter presses E, and Ooh. Baron kill. Kez gets rooted, flashes, Aww. and tunnels away. He's going to live, but enemy now wearing a Baron buff 25 minutes and 20 seconds in. Bottom and hip respawn. Top lane and hip never seemed to go down, because they did lose the fight after all. Now they have multiple places to apply pressure. Flares has his teleport back up. And here's the thing too, is they don't even have huge level or experience leads on enemy side. It's not like anybody's running away with the game in kills or CS. Yeah, it's yeah, really it's just one level the player. objectives. The objective calling is what is getting them this huge lead. It's those turrets, right? Seraph is actually up in CS by 50 because he's been split pushing. And then you look at Otter, he's up by about 20, but there's no huge, like, somebody's getting crushed just CS-wise. It's all about these turrets and the team play from enemy. And they're going to show themselves now for another turret. Mid lane, the only left up inhibitor turret. They want it with the Baron buff. Minions taking some turret shots here. Kez looking for a flank. Gets spotted out by Trash. He's got to be careful. Ballbreaker shreds the armor. 10,000 gold lead plus a Zareth Siege. Now, blue buff is up for the taking. They're not looking for it just yet, though. No, they're looking for flares to apply pressure onto this top lane inhibitor, and they might move bottom, but they also have the option of sieging middle. Zareth has such great siege options, and here he goes again. Kyle takes two, one. Takes two, but he's going to survive overall. However, it gives him enough time to push down the mid lane because Azir is out of the fight. Down goes the turret. Inhibitor under fire. Seraph gets caught out. Ren takes the kill. That's a lot of people now not able to fight back as enemy looks for a double inhibitor take at the same time. Otter picks up one. They could there go we for, go. They could go for three inhibitors here. Sure, the bottom one is unturreted at all. There's a mini wave looking at the Nexus right now as well, but looks like close bind. Triple inhib, safe advantage. Why the heck not? Baron's still here for a minute, which means they can push in the... the succeeding minion waves now and it's just minions all over the place not much tdk can do right now louis forced to back away poke from zareth pushing him out flares gonna tp in from the base after he buys one more item buys a haunting guys just for fun gets a mask for his scion there is every turret possibly a bit uh, able to be killed in comes the next push 27 and a half minutes enemy never let up all game one kill one turret one dragon that's it very dominating, commanding lead there. Not off of playing team fights until they already had a big advantage. Right? You get those tiny advantages, create them, make them even larger, off of getting turrets, off of rotating, knowing they can't fight you. The threat of a fight 
it's kind of like old Nidalee with the Xerath in the middle there. Threw his ultimate out, not to get kills, but to at least do damage to their wave clear, and then their wave clear backs off. Free turrets. Yeah. I'm just very impressed with the enemy shot calling. Yeah. The things they did well. Outplayed the lane swap. Outplayed the mid lane. Um, outplayed the second half of the lane swap, where they pushed down to bottom turret because they already have an item lead on their AD carry. Uh, they outplayed with the TP advantages. Knowing Seraphs is down, they pick a fight in the extended long lane and teleport their Scion down there, knowing it's 5v4, knowing it's going to work out. is crazy. This is a team that you need to keep your eye on. Yeah. They're 2-0 right now. They played against TDK twice. Mm -hmm. One in 36 minutes. Cut that 10 minutes off of that. Ended in 27. Mm -hmm. They look really good right now. This yeah. is the team to beat in Challenger. Well, so far, they're alone in first place at 2-0. Uh, uh, obviously, very early on, we, in fact, still have a, a game two to come up. There are only 10 games, though. Sure, there right. Are only 10 games before playoffs. Right. So... You already start out 2-0. You're off to a really good start. You can't start off going like 1-4 and four and then being like, all right, we're going to come back. You have to be good right out of the gate here. I know, exactly. It's a fairly short season. They qualified in, and if you want to get those top spots, you can make it into the playoffs, qualify uh, for an LCS spot doing all this. So enemy 2-0. A uh, couple teams behind them at 1-1. One one. TDK, unfortunately, though, to a slow start. You mentioned the fact that with it being a short season, you've got to kick it into gear very quickly. I do agree, TDK. Needs some strategic work. Kez, being their shot caller, having played multiple splits in the LCS, you expect him to have a bit of a better showing here on that side. But overall, their lane assignments were weak. The Vladimir never got off the ground because there's no team fight from the back off to sort of back up from. It's a damage dealer. He got as far by split pushing, but the rest of his team fell apart in front of him. Yeah, and TDK weren't really able to do any damage control. And I think Louis is a big part of that. He's not winning the two-on-twos. Mm -hmm. He's downright losing them and dying. And then in lane swaps, he's still not playing them 100% correctly. He's like 70% of the way there. But when you're the AD carry and you make one misstep versus a bruiser who can outduel you, you're going to feel that pain. And if you don't have enough ward coverage, like your support should ward for you and then leave. Right. Or else you're not covered. You can't shove up. You can't deny CS from the top laner. Yeah. There's a lot of things here that kind of amalgamated into this mm -hmm. big lead that they ended up with on NME's side. Yeah. But not to take anything away from NME, they played this so crazy, well. Crazy well. That was a really impressive and clean game. Yeah. Just all all through every lane. Like I'm, I'm thinking back on it. Yep. Like, Trashy was in the right places at the right time. He Counter knew where Dan to King. be. Inox did a really good job of roaming on a Xerath in a lane swap. Mm -hmm. Like usually in lane swaps, mid laners just clashed at each other forever. Yeah. And it was like, nope, going bottom. And then he made it happen. He gave yep. his team that avenue into the game. I thought that was really well done by all of enemy across the board. I agree. So great start by enemy. 2-0 first place team in the NA Challenger Series so far. Guys, we're going to take our final break of the evening. And when we come back, the TSM and CLG rivalry returns and makes its Challenger debut. CLG Black and TSM Darkness go head to head right after this. Don't go anywhere. Versus Summoner Hill for boost speed, but oh. wow, that shout on the minions means first blood for Trashy. Suddenly, yep, the Xerath ult will land, and it's going to be Inox picking up the first kill. The re-engage with Exhaust, though, on the smoothie. Can they make anything more happen? Oh, the bind on to Kyle. Fast damage to shove into this turret, and Louis Oh, nice. wow, the minion once again. Kez goes in, it's a 5v5, but first kill comes in already. Flare is forced to run away, though. Seraph ult is on him, but he's going to go drop down so fast. Body drop doesn't even die for the trouble.